started recording. Right. Um, we have gathered here to start a proper work session or like slowly ease into the work sessions routine after all the autumn busy autumn stuff. And what I have on my screen is the collision course folder where we have like outline notes and text scraps and also I have all sorts of pinned images. So for example uh, I have here in the same album slides I have the images that I, I used to collect for the uh, scribe and the doctor uh, story slice also maybe some that I, I would collect for salvage job salvage mission salvage mission <laughs> I, I forget I, I forget our own titles now and I've been correct <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I've been gradually adding stuff here and that, as per usual uh, all the Pinterest uh, piles they don't mean to exactly illustrate what's going on, but it's uh, I, ha I have found that scouring for images sort of helps me get into the mindset of the story. So it's like even even though none of the images actually match what we intend to talk about, they are sort of kind of sort of as a stepping stone or something. Really good for mirrored laser. I, mm. I, I didn't. I, I wasn't looking for Mira, but mm -hmm. I was looking for a lot of characters who have mm -hmm. got like one side of their head shaved, and there's a lot of that on Pinterest, and that really mm -hmm. gave me a good feel for what I was sort of trying to describe. So, yeah, um, yeah. Good inspiration. Yeah. So, for example, you can't see it right now, but um, I'm I'm showing some stuff for the for the viewers. So, for example, we have here different. Uh, uh, space stations that might serve as a sort of uh, anchor point for the. Did we did we have a name for the station where Nali lives? Uh, well, uh, um, scrapyard, uh, scrap station, like scrap station or something. Yeah. yeah. Placeholder name. Yeah, placeholder name, st scrap station. So, one of the ideas was that. Uh, the station has an externally contained atmosphere blanket or like at atmosphere buffer around it. Uh, well, obviously there aren't any images about that, but there are images about uh, space stations that have bigger spherical structures uh, around the main core. Then there are some images of uh, sky cities slash uh, space stations that have a ton of uh, ships docking to them. That's that's like one one emotion that we're after. Then there are uh, pressurized domes on different celestial bodies. Uh, those those would be a reference point to the scribe and the doctor uh, part. There are also some uh, shadow runny, sh shadow run like uh, facial accessories that are like, I don't, I don't know, like cyber flashy cyberware <laughs> that actually doesn't correspond to how we imagine the, uh, the augments to be, but they're cool. Mm -hmm. Ships, of Where course. Just get the working, really. Mm? Sorry? Just gets the gears working, really. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, what I mean is this, but more like under the skin. <laughs> uh, as per usual, there are ships, uh, vistas, that don't actually fit with anything, but kind of capture the mood. Uh, there is a picture of a mechanic working on something mm -hmm. that kind of gives me the uh, gnarly vibe. Uh, more ships, more sh uh, cityscapes, uh, especially deep underneath the city's st 
street level or like in the city's belly. Oh, and then I have uh, I have ocean settlements on the water and partially like fully submerged, partially submerged, uh, barren beaches, uh, more space stations. So all all that and also possible uh, harbor structure on the uh, on the industrial moon that we're going to all right I was thinking uh, so to start off I think we need some sort of recap for ourselves. Uh, recap and maybe even like a document where we sort the notes that we already have. Maybe maybe even add links and stuff. Very password. <laughs> and, and characters did something. <laughs> and then more stuff came to be. <laughs> <coughs> and, it, and it really drove the story forward, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you must have seen that bit in Family Guy where uh, it's Stewie and Brian, and Brian's talking about writing a novel, and Stewie's doing that. So you got all the characters figured out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh. Tell us over shit, I think so long. Where are we? Writing. Uh, yes. Oh, there's all these notes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the numbers. So again, explaining. As you know, Bob. <laughs> 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 so what these numbers mean is that we have, uh, we have like uh, pairs of documents. At first, we try to describe what's going on, in our own words. Like not. It's it's like the script for actual uh, story text so that's the situation notes and then coupled with that are the text drafts where we have like fragments and sentences and and dirty text uh, and uh, and yeah the, the the numbers show the chronology within the story because we we have quite a bit figured out actually and we have quite a bit uh, written down in various uh, forms of completion, uh, st various stages of completion. So basically, right now our task is to uh, sort of get this ball rolling again and then uh, very elegantly uh, hop atop the uh, rolling mechanism and start steering it again. <laughs> so, I'm going to throw this out there. Yeah. We, we, we had a very good system where we were working in like phases. Mm -hmm. So like, phase one is the boys, and we don't really, like, Jules, Jules is like more phase two, right? We don't mm -hmm. really get to her until phase two. So, I, I think... <laughs> if, if we're trying to be really basic about this, so phase one is where we should stay for the time being. Yeah, I also think that phase one is nearly complete, but we haven't wrapped. <laughs> but 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 we haven't uh, we haven't fully wrapped it up yet. So it's like we we are we are not basically what uh, I feel that we are not quite ready for phase two yet, but. Uh, we should allow us to work through the final bits of phase one, so that we so that we can then emerge and uh, and fly boldly into phase two. <laughs> That's a super villain thing to say. Like phase <laughs> one is almost <laughs> That is all part of the plan. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So for for today, that's that's why I'm suggesting some reminiscing and recapping and uh, and sort of uh, maybe even revisiting some bits that uh, that we have actually settled already but just to sort of 
get ourselves back into that headspace. And also, mm-hmm. if 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 there are questions from uh, from the uh, phase one era that we haven't figured out yet, we we can pick on those and revisit those and that that sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't. Well, we weren't working on this. I didn't actually come up with any questions. Mm. Really. Um, but do, do you uh, have uh, do you have any uh, any sort of open threads from from before that we have deliberately left for later?s I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> no, uh, I I actually I remembered one thing that I came up with. It's a very little detail to add to to the things. So when we speak about the scribe order and the works that they do, and how when a scribe goes to field work and has to retrieve some information, and uh, and maybe has to memorize some shit, then uh, there is this. Uh, there is this uh, protocol when they return to base that they have to quote unquote uh, clear their mind or like uh, get rid of the uh, get rid of the memorized data so that mm-hmm. they wouldn't start uh, overthinking it so that so that they wouldn't burden their mind with it and up until recently I, I had always thought of that as a mental exercise only like it, it, some sort of meditation, some sort of uh, mind clarity routine. But I realized that uh, there could also be a biochemical component to this. So we have already established that the scribes, uh, they have, they wear their special scribe suits. So basically it's a special specialists uh, suit that probably uh, helps to operate in light vacuum or like ba- basically it's a uh, what's the equivalent in t- in today's world not hazmat but basically a life support a life support suit that keeps you warm uh, takes care of your uh, metabolism up to a point keeps you warm keeps you cool uh, and in scribes case it also has all sorts of wearable technology like all sorts of augmentations that uh, some are integrated to the uh, to the person's organisms like organism like maybe uh, some visual aids and uh, and hearing aids those are already within their body, but they also have extra systems uh, worn in their clothes, like extra data banks and and so it's like, it's a it's a sort of interface, work clothing, uh, protective layer, that sort of fully, highly functional shit. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, does many things. Uh, all, also injects you with the uh, with be- with better chemistry, if you're down and like uh, keeps you going. <laughs> so I remember it also has various toilet functions as well. Sh- yeah, it it should have like uh, uh, this because has this this has. Yeah, this this has this has many different levels, but basically the idea is that the work suit or like a sp- specialist suit is worn uh, f- worn for a long time, so it does take uh, it does take away and process your your waste, and it uh, and it uh, it takes care of your body. So whenever I, I think like there is this. Uh, huge um, not example but like a huge guideline that uh, that sort of directs my mind whenever I think about uh, these specialist suits or uniforms uh, I always think of the still suits from Dune which uh, have the purpose of uh, 
uh, re recycling your your body's water, but they also do a lot more. Like they they also function as armor and they also uh, shield you from the sun and all that. So 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 that's I, I think that's where all this uh, uh, all this uh, uh, suit fetish comes from. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah. These suits have a so the way they interact with the user. I imagine that when it comes to taking the suit off for whatever reason, mm -hmm. there are visible marks left on the person who would wear uh, it. I would go beyond that. Uh, I would say that this is this is not uh, this is not uh, as trivial as marks on your body. This is more like peeling away the outer layer of your skin. Mm. So so it's like uh, you don't you don't just take your uh, specialist suit off uh, willy nilly. If you're already wearing something like this, then uh, taking it off requires a special care. So you, you don't just tear it off. You might even it's it's more it's more it's almost like a symbiont yeah. in, in in a way a mechanic uh, biomechanical symbiont. No, those are all words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for example, uh, we had a a similar, a very similar concept is the interface suit that helps you to uh, uh, helps you to steer the mecha and helps you to interface with the educator. So that is also like a full life support uh, waste management uh, do that. And uh, and there's also it also exchanges electrical signals uh, with your body. So so basically, it's it's a tool. It's a life support and information exchange tool that wraps around you, <laughs> in a way. Uh, but anyway, my my thought was that since uh, since the suit has all these life support uh, functions. And uh, we have already mentioned that uh, uh, the scribe has pumped uh, stimulants to his bloodstream when uh, when he was uh, when he was getting worn out. I was thinking that uh, the mind clearing routine should also include some sort of uh, chemical cocktail. So it's like uh, brain relaxants, <laughs> as I have called these in one place. So basically, a small detail that I wanted to add caused all this ripple discussion. <laughs> no, I think it's good. Get the back mm -hmm. of the next mm -hmm. Also, uh, reiterates how far to the sea certain aspects in this mm -hmm. case of the suit. And I think we're both in agreement that it's kind of a dazzle kind of thing. And it yeah. kind of makes sense that within that dazzle remit, it would have something to do with the brain uh, risks. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, I think it seems like it's up to the user when he starts. To use yeah, those. yeah, yeah. Like so, uh, so, I would think that there would be, let's say, for some military functions, I would guess that there could be suits that are, uh, that are controlled from a center. Oh, actually, I've, I've seen an example of this uh, in a TV show. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was called Continuum. Mm. Uh, so there, a cop from the future was sent uh, to the present-ish and she also had a skin-tight suit that had various armor and camouflage uh, properties. Uh, I don't think hers had like a, had the life support stuff that we're aiming, but it it wasn't that far in the future either. So, uh, but it, but it did have all sorts of display and uh, display functions, apps, uh, uh, camouflage, uh, reinforcement, that sort of thing. I, I think it also had like a speed boost, and and maybe it had some some medical. I think it did have some some medical applications as well, and uh, and that suit uh, was linked with an in-brain 
control ship and there were uh, par uh, there there were bits in the story where the uh, where her superior took over uh, the command. So, for example, there there was there were some dystopian elements in in their future. So, for example, there were like I don't know emergency priorities and stuff. And in certain situations, when she wanted to negotiate, uh, the uh, unit's commander took over and just had her shoot everybody. Stuff like this. The uh, control from a distance thing sort of reminds me of the in the old world blues. Mm -hmm. the yeah. Suit that <laughs> fair enough, their occupants aren't alive. <laughs> there's an element of control that is trying to bring them back mm -hmm. to wherever they came from. Um, and I, I sort of that was my goal. It sounds like there's a lot more. Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that uh, these sort of specialist suits, they, they have a lot of smart functions, but uh, depending on the situation, you don't want the suit to be too smart. Mm -hmm. Like you, you would still want the wearer to be in control. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's, it's more like an external extension of the wearer's uh, mental and physical processes rather than an, uh, a fully autonomous system. And of course, depending on the home world and depending on the manufacturer and company and function, you would have uh, different levels of that. So like, uh, not, not everybody would have seen the sort of super specialized uh, and and uh, super functional suit like the like the scribes have, and depending on the job, you would also have different emphasis on different functions. Yeah, yeah. I, I can, can tell you now. Cat of doesn't really encounter or have anything mm. special body suit, mm. but their whole thing with their military is trying to keep costs down. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there's an understanding there. Yeah. Depends on how mm -hmm. we encounter such things. And yeah, the yeah. Not not everybody in the universe is privy to the same information. Not everybody has access to the same technology. Not everybody has access to the same languages, even etc. 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 Right. Where 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 were we even? <laughs> <laughs> we were. I don't know. Doing the thing. I enjoyed that tangent though, and that put me right <laughs> in the field. Oh, just, just give me an excuse and I can give you another tangent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one? Yeah, the, there's not really anything... The one thing that strikes me is that I don't have any reservations about this story so far. Mm. There's no like, ah, should we do it this way, should we do it that way, I'm not too sure about this. So far I'm feeling really strong about all the sort of plot points. Um, I mean, even the, the okay, so just to take an example, Jewel is better than half pounds. That's something we alluded to in Seeker. Mm hmm. Uh, and have sort of built up towards. So I think that's pretty strong. We know where Nali and Strider are coming from. Uh, so, like Sam was mentioning, Strider and the Doctor. And we sort of know where they're going. We've got some interesting characters along the way, like the food scribe. I absolutely love that, that guy. <laughs> Uh, or like that girl. I don't think we've settled on that yet. I don't remember. <laughs> mm. well, we'll thing, but we will have to yeah. check the notes. Mm. But essentially, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the story points. I think they're all pretty strong. And I don't have a lot of questions. Maybe if it develops more, mm -hmm. I'll have more questions. But right now, I'm good. Alright. Uh... Shall I uh, end this little intro do that here? Yeah. Uh, so if we if we might uh, happen to go deeper into some tech stuff then it will be a new occurrence. I'm going to scroll through the imagery once more. Mm -hmm. There. 
Okay, so this little uh, recap tangent, the warm up thing ends here. <laughs> right. Anywho, <laughs> I, I I need to I need to polish my lava layer, but uh, <laughs> but do uh, do come back. Uh, Check our other work, etc. Uh, yeah, I'm waving now. Bye!